So you just got a PS5. Well, it might be time for a new TV. Man, it just feels like the hits keep coming for Sony right now. They've had trouble getting games out for the PS5. They've also gotten a lot of hate for closing down the PS3, PSP, and PS Vita stores. And on top of all of that, it's going to get a lot harder to even find a PS5 than it already is because a big boat got stuck in a canal or something. And now things are getting even worse for the PS5 because of how it displays content when you have the HDR mode turned off. HDR as a concept's actually been around for a while now. I remember the first time I saw it was on one of my iPhones when it started taking HDR photos after an update one day, but it really started to get popular in the gaming space when the Xbox One S and the PS4 Slim came out because both of those consoles shipped with HDR. If you've never heard the term before, it stands for high dynamic range, and basically what it stands for is the difference between the lightest lights and the darkest darks on your TV. So if you have a device like the PS5 that supports HDR plugged into a TV that supports HDR and the content you're watching also supports it, you should see a deeper range of colors, which basically converts to like darker blacks and lighter whites. I don't really fully understand how it works, but once you see the difference, you'll definitely get what I'm saying. And if you're wondering whether or not your TV supports HDR or not, if you bought it within the past few years, it probably has the feature because like I have a $350 TCL 4K TV. I bought it back when the PS4 Pro came out and it supports it's HDR. So if my cheap ass TV does, whatever you've got, as long as it's newer, probably has the feature too. It's really people who don't have an HDR TV who are going to start experiencing issues because one of my favorite gaming YouTube channels, Digital Foundry, has discovered that the PS5 actually has issues outputting SDR content in the right color space. This all really started thanks to another YouTuber though named Tim Rogers who was trying to show the difference between how games look on an OLED TV versus an LCD TV. He used Demon Souls and it's start screen which has a lot of blacks and a lot of whites to show that on an OLED TV with HDR enabled it looks like a very deep black and a very bright white but then when you turn off the HDR features you see that the blacks are sort of crushed and they almost look gray like the whole image is sort of washed out. I know you can probably see the difference based on the b-roll I have on screen right now but yeah that's the issue. The blacks don't look good because they wash out the whites. It's kind of like what it looked like when you had the backlight too bright on your PSP back in the day. But yeah, Tim Rogers was trying to show the difference between two different types of panel, one of them being a lot better but actually way more expensive, and then John Lineman responded that yeah, the PS5 doesn't actually output SDR content, right? So the comparison isn't necessarily a fair one. So the Digital Foundry guys explained that the way they discovered this issue in the first place is that they've captured a ton of footage on the PS4, the PS4 Slim, and the PS4 Pro, and they know what the color space looks like on that console. But then when they went and captured the same footage on their PS5, Fives, they noticed that the color space was fucked up because they're the guys you go to when you want to know how a game is running on a certain console, no matter what it is. Obviously, I'm not an expert on any of this, but I do get the concept of the PS5 not being able to display SDR technology properly because it's always in HDR mode. Like, even if the game you're playing or the movie you're watching doesn't support HDR, the PS5 is still running in that HDR color space. So if you have an HDR TV or you're not going into your settings and turning off HDR, you're really not going to notice this issue. But if you're a YouTuber or a streamer who captures footage off of their PS5 using an external device, you're probably going to end up turning HDR off because of the platforms that you're uploading to, like YouTube or Twitch. And it's going to get annoying if you have a shittier image overall just because you're not using the HDR color space that the console wants to use. Now, unfortunately, the jury is still out on whether or not Sony is going to be able to go in and fix this issue with a software update, or even if they are going to at all, but it's definitely one of those things where they're probably aware of it and they're seeing how many people are actually complaining about it before they commit any resources to fixing the issue at all. Now you're probably sitting there saying that this is a niche issue that's only going to affect a few different people, and yeah, I'll admit that you're right. But this goes back to what I've been saying for the past few videos, which is if you're Sony and you're sitting at the top, you've got a lot of eyes on you at any given time. And if you keep making all of these little mistakes, they're going to pile up and people are just gonna start having a more negative view of of your brand. So yeah, while it's not necessarily the biggest issue in the world that the PS5 can't display SDR content, right, when you compare it to all the other issues Sony 
Sony is having right now, all of that stuff is going to start piling up and start causing problems for Sony. I'm not gonna sit here and argue that being in second place is where you wanna be because that's just not true, but coming into this generation, Microsoft actually only had the ability to go up and they've been making a ton of small good changes to the Xbox ecosystem as a whole that really just improve the brand image overall. Like, yeah, it's not necessarily a huge deal that SDR doesn't work on PS5 and it's not a huge deal that the PS3 and PS Vita and PSP stores are shutting down and it's not a huge deal that because of COVID you can't really find a PS5 right now but then you start to notice stuff like how on the Xbox MLB the show which is a Sony developed game like Sony San Diego develops the show every year you can't really look at that game and say that the best place you can play it is PS5 because if you get it on PS5 you're gonna be paying $70 but if you want to play it on Xbox all you need is a $15 game pass subscription you see what I mean and yeah I got to be fair to Sony and say that they have the PS Plus collection and they have some good stuff that they're adding to PS now, but at the end of the day, neither of those options really compare to what you get with Game Pass. I know that on the PS Plus collection, the overall games you get are better. It's some of the best games Sony's ever made, but PlayStation fans were buying these games as they came out during the PS4 generation. And when you look at Game Pass and just how many different games are on there, it's just the better option. And no matter what, that doesn't improve the optics, that the best place to play MLB The Show this year is on an Xbox because you only have to pay $15. Now I will say the only people who really benefit from this are us PS5 owners because as Sony starts to slip, they're going to have to start doing some cool stuff to really bring us back in and remind us why we bought a PS5 in the first place. If you think back to the PS3 generation, it was pretty rough at the beginning, but then Sony got their studios in shape, they started making some great exclusives, and then a lot of people started going out and buying PS3s. And then when the PSN went down during the PS3 generation for like the better part of a month and it totally ended up with the destruction of the studio that made SOCOM 4, Sony turned around and gave everyone a bunch of just legitimately free games. And they were good games. I got Little Big Planet 2. I'm pretty sure I got some infamous games out of that. It was all because Sony started to slip. And then when the Vita, look at the Vita, man. It wasn't performing well at all when that console came out. And then Sony turned around and started releasing games on it the same day they came out on the PS3. And if you bought them on the PS3, you would get them for free on the PlayStation Vita. I remember going to the store day one and buying PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale because I knew I was getting a download code for a free Vita game with it. And if I got the Platinum Trophy, which was pretty easy to get, I could transfer my save over to the Vita and just unlock it again on that console. And the best part of that deal was I was a little bit short on cash back in my college days. So I would trade games in at GameStop when I wanted a new one. I would always get to keep the Vita version if I traded in the PS3 disc. That was such a cool thing that Sony was doing and they knew they were losing money on the games just to try and get people to go out and buy more Vitas. And yeah, I understand that things would have to get pretty bad for Sony to even consider doing anything as cool as they were doing back in the day, but they're starting to feel the pressure of Microsoft and Game Pass and all the different games you get on that device and how just awesome overall the Xbox Series X is, you know? So we're gonna start seeing some benefits that come along with owning a PS5 as time goes on. I completely guarantee it. And at the end of the day, Sony does still have the best first party exclusives. I don't think any of those games are going anywhere anytime soon. We're gonna get another Ghost of Tsushima. We're gonna get another Days Gone. We're gonna definitely get another Spider-Man. They're gonna have new IP coming down the pipe. And yeah, I'm pretty excited to be a PlayStation gamer because the more Sony starts to slip up, the more it's gonna benefit us. I just think the name of the game here is Patience. No one could have foreseen how bad 2020 and the beginning of 2021 were going to be because no one can really predict a global pandemic. But as time goes on, Sony's gonna be able to make more PS5 more people are going to be able to get them. We're going to start seeing more exclusive next-gen games, and we're going to be looking back saying, man, that sucked, but things are great now. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today on the PS5. Make sure you let me know what you think of everything I talked about down in the comments below. And remember to stay PS ready, subscribe, and set your notifications to all. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.